All right, so I really just want to thank all of you guys again for coming here. It really does mean a lot that all of you responded and got back and were nothing short of enthusiastic to, to come and help out with this. I would love to go around and introduce ourselves and what we do. My name is Taylor. I do a lot of film here in town and music. I love the arts. I love being a consumer and a producer of it. That's why I'm here, because I would love to hear why you guys do this. My name is Stacy Bautista, and I'm a visual artist. I work with a variety of mediums, such as acrylic, oil, charcoal. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Mona Lisa. I am the owner of a e-commerce clothing brand called Wake, and we're all about self-love and self-awareness. Um, my name is Arlinda Peacock. I'm an artist and musician and mother, and just love contributing to the local community with all the art I can and supporting others. I'm Jasmine. I'm a journalist. Um, I like to work in film, writing, both for film and for novels. And uh, I'm Bobby Peacock, uh, I'm a father of one, and I'm a videographer here in town, so I own my own business as well. Uh, Bonnie Herrera, co-founder of a company called Think3D. We specialize in leadership development, training, and organizational culture consultant. Also own another company called Flower of Country, which is an apparel company. Uh, musician and general man about town. Can anyone in this group raise their hand if their life has been affected by art, positively or negatively? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> In what ways? When did you guys start doing art? Honestly, I didn't realize I was creative until I started my brand, Wake. I really found um, art through fashion, so really expressing myself through fashion, and um, it's kind of like a character I like to put it as, you know, and I think that's just really awesome, and that's how I consider art is through fashion. For me, I ever since I could write. I've been writing short stories and growing up my mom was a photographer so I always had a camera and I started making little short movies in high school and I just, it clicked, it made sense to me. That's kind of how I view the world is through art and I just connect with it. I think for, for me it started like from a young age watching like my two older sisters play piano and we were always involved in some kind of like music thing and that's really really where because um, I also DJ so that's really where it got me going but then as far as uh, film it started my junior year in high school so yeah. I was uh, kind of a nerd in middle school and high school and every day after school I would watch the musical Cats and would just try to reenact everything and I would play piano and I would write for days and I didn't actually start performing until about three, four years ago. Um, I just kind of was an observer. I would go to everyone's shows, be supportive, and then I finally grew the balls and started doing it myself. I kind of grew up with art too. I always wanted to be very therapeutic, and I also was a musician growing up. I was a violist, and so that ended like when, with college, but it was always like a good emotional release for me, both vis like with visual art and with music too. I was a uh world as a stage type of kid. Like there was never like a separation between like art and life. It was just, it always was. We were always performing, always doing whatever. I never felt like, oh, now I'm an artist or now I, ooh, I want to do that. It was just always who I was. I think that's kind of an interesting point. Uh, in the beginning when everyone introduced themselves, we kind of have our own specific mediums, but I tend to find my words a little fuddled when someone say, well, what do you do? And you describe, oh, filmmaker, dancer, painter. Yeah. But you never just say, oh, I'm an artist. Yeah. Have you guys ever just straight up described yourself as, oh, yeah, I'm an artist? Or yes. does that feel weird? And there's just so many realms. Like, sometimes I don't talk about the photography I do. Sometimes I don't talk about, like, things I write. Story. Like, there's just so many realms to yourself. So, like, I think it ex in itself, Art is an expression and it can, can go over every category, in my opinion. I think everybody's an artist. I think humans are art. You know what I mean? Like, in the world, our composition doesn't necessarily make sense. You know, we can, we can evolve beyond necessity. And so we were meant to do things beyond eating and sleeping and hunting and doing whatever. And so the fact that we design things and create things and all of those other type of things, I think it's in the DNA. So I think everybody's an artist. It's just whether or not you are lucky enough to find your outlet. 
Mm -hmm. So what does your art tend to express? Pain. It's the easiest way that I can express myself. And I like to make it seem like it's happy so those who can see underneath it can kind of understand that. Where like sometimes not everything is as it is on the surface and pain really can be, be in all of us. I think for me, controversy. I like getting people to ask questions and difficult questions, um, especially through like film. Then there's also like, especially when I DJ, there's the, the fun side of it too, where you just get to, to wow, wow out a little bit and, and have fun um, hitting the stage and just be there to just have fun, you know? So. It's one of those things where it, it means different things for different people based on where they're at in their life. But the medium is, is all the same. It's all a manifestation of expression. I feel like art definitely journals my emotions, but then also it allows me to really visually see like any questions I have. And then it's a reflection of what I think without even realizing what I'm actually even like thinking, if that makes sense at all. It's like when you have a kid or anybody that's super expressive, what do we call them? We call them dramatic. Yes, very much. Acting it out. I really like to focus on sort of normalcy. Um, a lot of the films or the books I read are just very relatable, down-to-earth people doing things in their daily lives. So with my own art, I just kind of like to capture those moments. Speaking of your own art, what are some of the favorite pieces you guys have ever made? I feel like any piece that like makes you question my sanity a little bit, really, <laughs> is my favorite because I it's the fact that I'm like I know I'm gonna go all in and put in a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it. And like the one piece that comes to mind when I think of that is actually a piece called Cuba. I had it like at the Wash Pavilion recently. And it's a picture of a broken down building from Cuba. And it was beautiful to me because this building, you can tell I had like this amazing architecture, but it was like so broken down. And to me that like really connected with me as like a human. And the fact that I was able to bring that back in the form of art was really meaningful. What if it's an unfinished project or something you stepped away from? Because I recently stepped away from a film that I was trying to create, but I'm actually was super proud of all the things I discovered and learned how to do. So it's like, even if there's projects that you aren't completely proud about that you didn't finish, I feel like if you take those skills and utilize them in a, into something that is more integrated towards yourself, it can even build it even more too. So I think failure is also something to be proud of as well. I think a lot of times when people think about a piece, they think about it having a finite end, but, but that's tethered to consumerism, right? Like you're finished so you can sell it. But really, when is anything done? So for me, one of the things that I work hard at is is avoiding perfection you know it's it's being comfortable with the vulnerability of saying there's a flaw because i can work on it for forever and justify it because it's not perfect i just don't want to have that relationship with my art the past few years i've been living in chicago and i found a group of artists that just everything we made felt it was fun and it felt good and important and i couldn't pick like one thing that we made but i just know that each experience it just felt like we were pushing each other to be better artists, be better filmmakers. And one of the things that we really focused on was making art for ourselves, not for what we thought people wanted to see or hear. Yes. It was just, we like it, so why not do it? I really like what you said, because I feel like a lot of the times, like, as like artists or content creating, I think sometimes we can get into that state of mind where it's like, oh, um, what's the next big thing where people are gonna get like, or how are we gonna get more likes or more engagement? And then it's just so draining. But then when you like put that down and you're like, wait, like I'm doing this for me. And then again, like the right audience will come along. A through line I've kind of been hearing for the past couple statements is that it's not necessarily the end output that a lot of us care so much about, it's more the experience and the joy of what we're doing. Is that something you guys have consciously really thought about? I think when you when you look at art and stuff, I think um, like there's a, there's a statement that like if you really enjoy something, it's like the hardest thing that you're going to work at. And so, um, so there's really two sides of it, of, of like just experiencing like what you're, what you're going through, what you're walking through within the, in the process. But then there's also like the grinding of like, okay, mm -hmm. like I gotta get this done. Like I may not enjoy what I'm like this part of it, but I'm going to enjoy the finished project, or I'm at least gonna enjoy um, the process 
and the progress that I've made. And so I think there's like so, like when it comes to art, there's so many levels like that, so. Yeah. I, ha I have a process, no doubt, but I'm not a person that just like can go in a cave and then try to create this masterpiece yeah. and then do a thing or whatever. It's like, it's not that whatever for me. It's just one of those things. It's like, yo, have we ever, has Sioux Falls ever made a movie? No, nah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. That's just my energy. And, uh, and that helps me propel me into to stuff I enjoy. I want to kind of discuss some of the positive and negative experiences you've had with the art world or with art itself. I want to hear both. And ultimately, which ones have been more cathartic for you? Making, you know, Happy by Pharrell or making a diss track, you know? There's, there's two totally different ends of the spectrum there, you know? I think the negatives that I've encountered is I'm a single mother and some of my art, it could be considered controversial, it's different, um, uh, my sexuality, all of it comes into it and it's just, I'm in South Dakota, so I, you know, like, I feel that sometimes there's a risk for a single black mother to put some of this art out there. I'm, I'm all for body positivity and all those things. I think the biggest negative thing I've encountered was just the stigma and the judgment, which makes it very, very hard to continue sometimes. I think for me it's um, access and community. So like, depending on like what you do and the time you have, it's not always feasible to say like, okay, I can just you know, take off time from work to do this or whatever. I agree with this, 100%. <laughs> you can't have a band without money. Right, it's, it can be hard in that sense where you kind of see, okay, who can make art versus who can. It's not necessarily about talent, it's about resources, and that can be hard sometimes. It can be very hard to find, you know, people that want to create art. Um, and like create yours, too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like creating it for art's sake, not necessarily, um, yeah, exactly. Always constantly a battle of like, well, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pay the bills, but yet I wanna, I wanna do something that that matters, and so it's trying to find that balance of like paying the bills, but then also like, how do I better my craft, work on my craft, and be able to do something that's like beyond creative that that just like it's not only just for my heart, but for the hearts of others as well. I think. Uh, the process of art is, is is really the gift in a lot of ways, you know? And there was challenges for me, especially doing hip hop. And I, I don't know where I would be if it was laid out for me. Yeah. I don't know that I would have enjoyed it. I don't know that I would have experienced it. I don't know that I would be the monster that I am if I didn't have to navigate and go up and over and around and through and blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and so. It's rejoicing in yeah, the mind. Yeah, it's That's the gift. Weird. That's the gift. With them, um, with all of us being so invested in the process, the product, the, the people that love us, the people that hate us on it, when you make art that has a message, do you think that deserves more respect than art that doesn't? No. My son drew me a Spongebob picture and I almost cried. Like, I feel like <laughs> the world doesn't owe you anything. Like, I don't think I personally seek respect as an artist. I seek an outlet and I seek something that is just keeps me going every day and it's just me, you know? When I see young artists in particular that have not developed their voice yet or, or, or where I get the sense through their music or their art that they don't understand the power that's in it, they don't understand what's available to them, yeah. I'm challenged by that part. I feel like it is our duty as, as artists who have been doing it for a while is to look out for some of these people. Times where I'm like so grateful when people step in to help or put their creative in, um, like it's not judgment, it's more or less like uh, positive criticism or positive reinforcement. Like sometimes it's like nice to have people willing to speak up and help me because I don't know everything. I literally don't, I don't know much, you know? I think also people just respect different things. We all have different values. We have different things that we have, like different priorities. So maybe like somebody makes a piece of art about one thing and it's like okay that's not something i'm super into but for some people that is they're going to respect it more just based on their lived experience mm -hmm. like, yeah speaking of perspectives and looking at things differently and values do you guys think identity politics and art have a positive or negative relationship you know it's when people say like the, the world doesn't revolve around you of course it does of course it does your perception of the world is the world yeah. It revolves around you, so your experiences do the things that shape who you are, shape what you do. There's no way to avoid that. There are certain like shows or movies that you see and it's like 
you can tell that like a studio exec said, we need a black show, or we need a show about a uh, Hispanic family. And then it kind of like, there's like a burden on that show then to address every issue related to that group of people mm -hmm. in whatever way. And I think that could be, that can have a negative impact because we all live differently. When we like look at like identity politics, politics in entertainment, there has to be more to it. You have to be able to, as an artist, flesh that person out, flesh that story out into more than the political identity of them. I think everybody has a worldview. Yeah. Um, and so obviously we would address like your worldview is different than my worldview, you know, and your worldview, everybody's worldview is different. Part of art, I think, is going into someone else's worldview and asking questions of like, okay, for example, I may not understand that lifestyle or like agree with that lifestyle, but help, help me understand. And so how can I create a piece of art um, that can help multiple people understand that worldview? Stacy, how should we uplift others to take ownership of their skills and bring more enthusiasm to the strengths of our peers? Just be a supporter. Like if you see someone that's um, doing well, like you just need to make sure that you're reaching out to them. Because I mean, I'm I'm introverted. I'm introverted, especially with my artwork. It's very personal to me. Um, but as soon as people were very like supportive and like reaching out and like um, encouraging, that's where I was like starting to branch out and feeling like okay. I can let go a little bit of like just feeling controlling, I guess, of, and like possessive of my art and like share that with other people because I realized it was resonating with other people. Mona Lisa. So with Wake, I something I have noticed from the beginning of ever catching on to the amazing thing that, that you're doing is that you guys have had a large variety of models and a really unique aesthetic. Is there something in particular that ever inspired both of those things or is that something that has just come natural to you? I think it just came natural. I think um, we just wanted something a little bit different and especially where we're from, South Dakota, I feel like um, in a sense, it sometimes feels like we're, you know, five years ahead of everyone when it comes to fashion because necessarily, you know, people don't quite understand, like, um, a $75 hoodie. They don't understand the value of, like, high fashion. So I want to say we just want to be different and, like, that's who we are. Arlinda, when every time we've spoken, even in this, you have always been incredibly open and forward about your art. How can we encourage more people to be vulnerable and courageous? I think it's just go outside for a day and scream and be crazy and embarrass yourself. I've embarrassed myself so many times in my life that at this point I'm just like, hey. I think it's been therapeutic being an artist because you, you just kind of let go of some of those vulnerabilities and finding art and being able to put myself out there. It just, I think it really it's really healing for people and if I can get anyone to just scream and be wild and be themselves, I, I think that would make me feel really good. So. I just had to take that in for a second. Uh, Jasmine, what is something that young artists should expect to face as they begin their journey, whether positive or negative? Like lots of feedback that might not necessarily be helpful. Just being very cautious of like, when you share your art, make sure you're sharing it with people that are gonna be honest with you, that want to make you better, that want to be better themselves, that don't necessarily want to just kind of bring you down so that they can lift themselves up. And I think a lot of artists want community, and so finding those people that are really gonna lift you up as much as they lift themselves up. If you're just like a young artist, just being kind of prepared to to kind of like like sift through all of that because there's a lot, and people are gonna love you or they're not, and it's not personal. I think is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Just really not taking it personally. Yeah, having a bullshit detector is a strong skill. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. <laughs> I mean, you can usually tell. You can tell when somebody's like. Just trying to bring you down. Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the comment section, you know, one of the two. Oh, <laughs> Bobby, should we ever distill our art to be more palatable, or should we trust that the right people will find it and respect it? Oh, man, always trust that the right people will find it and respect it because the moment that you like downgrade your your art, it's like you're you're not doing any justice to you as an artist or to the people who need that kind of art. Because like for me, I, I like to find myself really being in that controversial world of like, okay, let's let's make art that makes people ask questions. And I can't downplay that because then the, the wrong questions are gonna be asked. I think it was seven years ago, eight years ago, um, I, was, I was quiet 
for a long time about the whole racial stuff, racial injustice. And I downplayed some things um, because I had a fear of, of what my Christian brothers um, would say. And then I just remember having a moment with God and saying, okay, God, like, I hear that you wanted me to speak out against this stuff. How do I do that? And then I just started writing. And if I would have like whitewashed that or like, like just like just made it less tasteful, um, then I would have downplayed the gift that was given to me to display to the world. Vani, you used your platform to uplift, educate, and inspire others, myself included. I probably wouldn't be in this chair right now if if I hadn't taken some classes that you had led. What was the hardest part about achieving that platform? And why did you choose to use it positively? I'm inspired by, you know, unlocking people. I'm a deep believer in that. Like, you, like I can't give you anything. You know what I'm saying? I could just help you unlock it. You know, because it's about finding who you are and how to operate in this world being that. And for me, that part came easier to me than I saw it come to other people. And so I wanted other people to have access to that because I think it affects your quality of life. It's interesting because for me, one, I, I've always been mostly ahead of my mental state, you know what I mean, in, in, in a way, like I said, that I didn't witness in other people. And one of the things was that was the most challenging for, for me as an artist is that there was a point where everything that I did was, you know, um, watch this, I'll show you. You know, it was from people doubting me, from people be down on me, all those other type of things. And then I did enough stuff where it got weird because it changed for me. Because then people start coming up to me, they'd be like, man, that's awesome. I can't wait to see what you're gonna do next. And then it was like, oh, I lost my juice. I didn't have the same juice because I wasn't angry and because people expect it from me now. Mm -hmm. And now I can let people down and now I can mess up people, all this other type of things. And going through that journey with it, uh, just helped me understand was, is that number one, leaving a person to luck to navigate all of this is just cruel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First of all, um, because some people don't find it until later. You have to navigate it the best you can for you and for the people that you care about. And when you do that, when you let all that other shit go, it just makes so much stuff available to you. So uh, what do you guys see for your future in art? Where, where do you think, it, is it gonna remain, I love this and it's a part of my life, but I don't push it? Is it, I aspire for stardom? Is it somewhere in between? What, is it, what does it look like for all of you guys? I'm learning about my kid right now. I mean, art is always gonna be something I do, and it's always something that I always, always have, but it's just like watching my son, he's in third grade now, find his artistic interest, like that's kind of taken some of my time lately, and I really like that. Yeah, so doing those things with him. Yeah, I'll always be a musician, and that's, again, something I always wanna do, but yeah. I'm gonna I'm piggyback off of that, because I have a three-year-old, and so the term uh, legacy, you know, um, so watching, my son, when we listen to music, and him like picking up music really fast, I'm like, okay, all right, cool, cool, we got something here that we can be excited about. Or him saying, Daddy, I, I want to take your kind of expensive camera, and I want to take a picture of you, and it's like, okay, 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 okay. But then I'm like, you know what? It's all right. This is a moment with my son. So it, for me, it's... Let me touch it. <laughs> Grow. <laughs> but like for me, it's about like what kind of legacy do I want to leave with my, um, like not only within my son, but also within like my community as well. I think with me just going with the flow, I think a lot of the times we'll, I used to really like be so focused on the end goal and where I'm headed and I felt like in a sense it made me really miserable inside and felt trapped so now I'm really just learning to let let go of that and just go with the flow like I already know where I'm going to be and where I'm headed in my life and just got to stay focused positive confident and do my goals that I set every single day kind of finding that balance of like how do I have a career and how do I have like an artistic like passion and journey that are both fulfilling. And so with being a journalist, I can still tell those stories, I can make people feel heard, I can get these stories of the community out, and like, especially stories that aren't really heard in, you know, the news in South Dakota. That's like one of my biggest things. But then also recognizing that like, things don't have to be done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to be somewhere just because 10 years ago I thought I would be. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, like you said, like letting go and just, kind of letting things happen. So I mean, I made it this far. Next if I can feel fulfilled in my work and feel as if I'm helping others, 
that's more important to me than you know having some like big fancy job that impresses people. Yep. If it's not fulfilling me spiritually, then mm -hmm. what's the point? I agree with that. I feel exactly the same way. I'm just seeking to create art that's like so therapeutic, so like a good emotional release and like not just for me either like I really want to be able to like use that to connect with others too because I'm sure every, like there's people that resonate with that human emotion no matter how different it is but um, the moment I also recognize that the moment that art stops being enjoyable and like mm. it's not fulfilling anymore and it's just probably actually just being bringing more stress I'm okay with knowing that I will walk away with it mm -hmm. giving everything I gave I just believe that if you um, work hard at being happy, you'd be happy to work hard. Mm -hmm. So if you see me working at something, I'm working towards something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm working towards something that's going to bring happiness to me. And so because of that, you're always going to see me touching the things that make me happy or facilitate my happiness, whatever it is. And so I don't put any limits on that. I don't know what's going to make me happy tomorrow. I don't know what's going to make me happy in 10 years. But if it do, I'll be doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all of you guys for giving me this beautiful opportunity to yeah, to continue to be a, a student taught by friends, mentors, and, and like-minded peers. This was amazing, and I, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, and you, and you. I tried so hard not to cry this whole time. Oh, you did good. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is not very likely no. that we get an opportunity to speak This is great. Right? I'm ready for work. Great. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, like, it's, uh, we can't forget. It's, it's Saturday, y'all. Work, 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 work